All right, so let's just uh, paint a picture here. You're scrolling, right? Late night, maybe, on your phone. Okay. And bam, you hit the brakes. There's this video. Kind of shaky. It looks real. Yeah. It's this guy in Panama, and he's got what looks like a meteorite, like fresh from space. Okay, interesting start. But that's not even the wild part. Coming out of this rock is this dark, gooey thing, and it's moving. Moving how? Like pulsing, stretching. It looks so well alive honestly the first thing that jumps into your head is like venom from the comics for real wow okay that's quite the image right so this panama meteorite anomaly thing just exploded online everyone's asking is this it is this you know actual alien life yeah so today we're doing a deep dive we're going to peel back the hype and figure out what was really going on it really is the perfect hook isn't it that idea of finding something uh, not from here totally it taps right into that uh deep curiosity we all have. And yeah, that's what made the Panama thing go so viral. So our mission here is to really dig into it. Was it an alien? Or is there maybe a, uh, let's say more down to earth explanation, but maybe one that's just as fascinating in its own way. Definitely. We'll look at the evidence, you know, challenge those first impressions and see where the science actually leads us. And man, watching it unfold online with something else, those first videos, they were just mesmerizing. Mm. You see this black kind of shiny substance and it's not just sitting there. It stretches out these tendrils and pulls them back. Like it's testing things out. It's a very deliberate looking move. Exactly. It looked, I don't know, predatory? Alive, anyway. <laughs> and because it was supposedly coming from a meteorite, well, the jump to alien felt almost logical, didn't it? It's easy to see how people got there. Especially when it looked so much like, you know, the stuff you see in sci-fi movies. Venom's a great example. That fluid, shape-shifting look. It just clicked for people. Yeah. The internet just lit up. Theories, awe, even a little bit of fear, you know? Oh, I can imagine. So put yourself in that position. You see this video, no context. Just scrolling, bam, what do you think? I bet most of us, me included, would go straight to alien. Oh, absolutely. It's hard not to. It looked so other. We do that, right? Throughout history. See something weird? Jump to the extraordinary explanation first. Sea monsters, fairy circles. That's a very human tendency, yes. Confronted with the truly anomalous, our pattern-seeking brain often looks for the most dramatic fit. And this was just the latest super viral version of that. You really nailed that initial reaction. The visuals were just so strong. Without immediate scientific context, yeah, alien is where a lot of minds would go. Right. But what's interesting here is how relatively quickly the scientific community started offering a different idea, a, uh, a much more terrestrial one. Okay. This supposed alien goo, it's now pretty widely identified as polydimethylsiloxane, mm. PDMS for short. Polydimethylsiloxane? Okay. That sounds mm. so very chemical, not very ET. It doesn't quite have the same ring to it, does it? No. So wait. My first thought, and probably for a lot of people listening, is like, huh, how does silicone stuff, you know, like in sealant or something, how does that act alive? Right. That's the disc okay. stick. We saw movement, scratching, like it was doing things. It feels like a huge leap from alien to like bathroom cock. What are we missing? It's a totally fair question. And it points to something kind of cool about material science. These things aren't always just inert lumps. Okay. Especially PDMS. <laughs> When you mix it with certain things, um, specific solvents like hexane, it's, I think it's good. lab stuff. Exactly. Common solvent. When PDMS meets hexane, you get this amazing thing called swelling-induced snapping motion. Swelling-induced snapping. What does that mean? Okay, think of PDMS like a big net of tangled polymer chains. Right. Uh-huh, like molecular spaghetti. Sort of, yeah. Yeah. And when hexane comes along, it soaks into that net. It gets between the chains, makes them untangle a bit, and the whole thing swells up. Okay, like a sponge absorbing water. A bit like that, yes. But here's the trick. The swelling might not happen smoothly. As the hexane moves in, it creates tension inside the material. Internal stress builds up. Right. And when that stress hits a critical point, the material suddenly changes shape to release the energy. It snaps. Snap! Like a rubber band. Kind of. But that snap, seen on a larger scale can look like a sudden stretch or a pulse or a coiling motion. It looks incredibly like something moving on its own. Whoa. It's not biological growth, not cells dividing or anything. It's pure physics and chemistry. 
a mechanical reaction to the solvent. People like uh, at Freaky Squid 69 online did a great job explaining this specific chemistry, connecting the dots for everyone. So hexane is particularly good at making it do this. Yes. Hexane works well with PDMS. It gets absorbed easily, causing that significant swelling in the resulting snaps. That is actually mind-bending. So what looked intelligent, maybe even like exploring, is just chemistry in action. Pretty much. Sophisticated chemistry and physics creating movement that looks biological. That's the real aha moment, isn't it? That lifelike movement doesn't always mean life. Precisely. It totally reframes those videos. You go from, whoa, alien, to, whoa, material science. Right. It challenges our gut feelings about what movement means. It really does, like a chemical magic trick. Exactly. And, you know, th this isn't some brand new one-off thing discovered because of this video. Oh, yeah. No. Researchers have been studying PDMS and similar responsive polymers for a while now. There's a whole field called smart materials. Smart materials. Yeah, materials designed to react to things light, heat, chemicals by changing shape or moving, all without traditional motors or electronics. Huh. It's really active area of research. Hmm. Scientists are figuring out how to basically program materials to behave in specific ways just based on their chemistry. Okay, so this isn't just a weird party trick for PDMS. It connects to bigger things, real world stuff. Oh, absolutely. This kind of research is huge for fields like uh, soft robotics. Soft robotics, right. like squishy robots. Kind of, yeah. Robots made from flexible materials that can move more like, say, an octopus than a factory machine. Mm -hmm. Imagine grippers that can handle delicate objects or tiny robots for medicine that move through the body. Wow, okay. Using these chemical principles instead of motors. That's the goal for some applications, yes. Simpler, potentially more adaptable movement. And it's key for those smart materials, too. Think self-healing surfaces or camouflage that adapts. Or sensors that react to specific chemicals. Exactly. All sorts of possibilities. Mm -hmm. So this alien blob actually connects to some really cutting-edge science and engineering. That's amazing. It started as one thing and turned into something completely different, but just as fascinating. That's the perfect way to put it. The Panama anomaly is just a fantastic real world showcase of this principle. Yeah. It really hammers home the idea. Chemistry can mimic biology in ways that fool our eyes. Mm -hmm. Completely non-living things can look alive through these reactions. Right. And that scientific explanation based on how polymers and solvents interact completely replaces the alien idea with something solid, something testable. It shows how weird and wonderful, you know, even synthetic stuff can be. Definitely. And researchers are getting really good at controlling it now, tweaking the PDMS structure, like how tightly woven that net is, to control exactly how it snaps, the timing, the force, even the direction. So they can make it perform specific actions just with chemistry? That's the direction it's heading. Mm -hmm. Programming movement into the material itself. Incredible potential there. So quite the journey we've taken today then. Started with a potential alien contact caught on video. High drama. High drama. And ended up deep in the world of silicone polymers and uh, swelling-induced snapping motions. It doesn't sound quite as dramatic, but maybe even cooler in some ways. I think so. Hopefully this deep dive gives you a shortcut past all the hype online. You get the informed story, not just the sensational headline. And it's just a great reminder, isn't it? Be critical, think scientifically, especially when something looks too wild to be true online. Absolutely essential these days. Just because it looks alien mm. doesn't mean it is. The real story, the science, can be just as mind-blowing. Indeed. What a brilliant example of how easily we can be swayed by striking visuals and that powerful pull of the unknown. Mm. It does make you wonder, doesn't it? With viral stuff hitting us constantly, how often are we seeing clever chemistry or physics or material science mm -hmm. and mistaking it for something else? Because we just don't understand the science behind it yet. Exactly. What other mysteries out there might just be examples of these principles at work waiting for us to look closer? Yeah. Like, what else are we missing? It's a great prompt, I think, to approach the world with not just wonder, but also that scientific curiosity, always asking. Okay, how does that work? Right. Not just what is it, but what's the mechanism? Precisely. Sometimes the real magic isn't in the mystery itself, but in understanding the beautiful mechanics behind it all.